In this lesson, I'm going to show you the chords in the key of E. All right, so in this lesson, I'm gonna show you chords in the key of E. I'm gonna show you the finger placement, the chord placement. Um, then I'll talk a little bit about playing these chords in the context of, of the acoustic guitar, uh, maybe when to play them, when not to play these chords in the key of E, and rather just use a capo with something else. Um, and then lastly, I'm gonna go through a song showing you these chords, um, how they sound with the song Jesus We Love You by Bethel Music. So let me give you the breakdown of the chords. We're gonna start off first on this A chord. So I like to do the A chord like this. So you have your ring finger on the D string, and then you have your pinky finger on the G string, the third one from the bottom. Both of those are on the second fret, so you'll, you'll, you'll strum all the strings starting on the fifth one down. So it's an A chord, so we want to hear that A string as the bass note. So I'm just resting my thumb on this low E string, because we don't want to hear that one. So you can do that, or you can just intentionally play the bottom five. We don't want to play all six, because then we're adding that E bass note. So you can also do this A chord like this with these two fingers. I personally like to do it with these because we have a lot of movement with these chords in the key of E. So unlike you know when we're in the key of G, we're just kind of right here. We're not moving a whole lot. We've got these two fingers locked in there. With chords in the key of E, we're, we're doing a lot of sliding um, up and down the, the neck here uh, in different positions. So I always like to do this one because you keep these two fingers in the same spot to transition to the B chord and then to transition to the C sharp minor chord. Otherwise, if you do it like this, you have your A, then you literally have to take your fingers, you have to take your fingers completely off the strings, find your way up to that B chord, and then you can slide to the C sharp minor. Doing it like this, it just makes it so much easier, so much quicker, and just so much faster. And you won't have those, kind of like those uh, dead breaks when you're changing between chords and you're like, you know, there's that dead space because it's taking you a minute to figure out, okay, there's my B. And there's my A. I gotta go from the A to the C sharp minor way up here. You can just boom. So while we're here, this is our B chord. It looks like I'm barring, but I'm not. I'm just using my pointer finger on the second string, um, or on the second fret of that A string. And I, I have it open, there's nothing, I'm not, I'm not barring it, I'm just, I have it like that. And then we go to the fourth fret, we have our uh, ring finger. Again, we're keeping that, those two locked in there pretty much the entire time. So that ring finger, still gonna be on that D string of the fourth fret. And then the pinky finger, still gonna be on that G string of the um, fourth fret. And you can just, you definitely, you don't want to play this bass note, kind of like that A chord. We don't want to play all six strings and strum all six strings. So what I'm doing is I'm just bumping my pointer finger into that high E string or the low E string and muting it. Because we don't want to hear this. So then the next chord, we're gonna to go to the C sharp minor, which take our um, chord formation here, slide it up two more frets. So this is gonna be the exact same chord formation as your B chord. So we're just taking this whole unit here 
and moving it up two frets. So one, two. Did I do that right? Yeah. So now you have your ring finger and your pinky finger on the sixth fret, and then you have your pointer finger on the fourth fret, still muting out that low E string because we don't want to dis we don't want to hear this. Okay. So now if we go back to that E chord, well, if we go to the E chord, which we haven't done yet, even though we're not going to use this exact formation, this ring finger, we're going to keep it on, locked on to that D string because the E chord is right there. So I know sometimes people like to play this A chord and then go up to this E chord. You can do either way. I personally just think that this way is easier because you know the, the movement to get to that B in the C sharp minor chord, it's just a lot. So this way, if, you, if you're playing a song like we'll play in a couple of minutes, we go from the A to the E, you're just, you're keeping your ring finger locked in on that string. Then you just put these two on there. So that is your E chord. And then we have the E over G chord, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, so really we have our, our pointer finger on the second fret, third string from the top, so that D string. We have the fourth fret here, we have our ring finger hitting that low E string. And then we have our pinky finger snuck in underneath there on the G string, the third one from the bottom. And for this, this formation, you're going to be muting the A string with your ring finger. And you would strum all six strings. So as you can see, this chord formation in and of itself, not going to be the most user-friendly and easiest chord to get to if you're playing rhythm acoustic. So um, yeah, that would be your E over G. And then we have an F sharp minor, which we're gonna keep our fingers um, on this fourth fret here. So we're gonna go ring finger, second string from the top, the A string. Then we got the pinky right underneath it on the D string. And then we have our pointer finger on this second fret on the G string. And for this, I you can wrap your thumb around that second uh, second fret uh, low E string, the bass note, to give it a nice, big, juicy, chunky sound. But that's gonna require you to really, you know, get your hand and get your finger in some weird places um, it's you're not really used to. So um, if that's too uncomfortable to, 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 to grab that low E string, I mean, you could just, play that right there. Just mute the low E string. That'll get you close enough to that F sharp minor. Another way you can do this F sharp minor is um, if you were in your, uh, if you just went to your A chord that we already did, and you just put your middle finger on that low E string, second fret. Strum those all six strings. I'm, I'm kind of, sometimes, I don't really use this chord often, but when I do, um, I can't remember if I mute that second string or not. Either way, this is just another, probably easier way to do this um, F sharp minor chord. So again, we have the E chord, A, B, C sharp minor, E over G sharp, and the F sharp minor. 
So clearly we have a lot of movement going on with these chords and switching to the second part here of the, of the lesson, you know, the, the acoustics role is just to be, just to be rhythm, to be smooth, to be solid. Just, you don't want to have a lot of big breaks. Like when you're changing chords, you just don't want it to sound clunky. So I personally don't really play chords in the key of E very often. Um, sometimes for our church band, for our worship team, we'll have two acoustics. And if the other person's doing just rhythm, maybe I'll just, you know, do some big thick down strums on these chords here and play in the key of E. But if I'm the only acoustic and I'm, and I'm the rhythm acoustic kind of keeping the tempo and keeping everything smooth and, and, um, and solid, I, I really, I, I won't play chords in the key of E. Rather, I'll use a capo and probably just use chords in the key of D because they're much easier to change to um, and there's not as much movement. So I really don't play a ton in the key of E just because it's, you got some of these weird, weirder chords. They're not, they're not your typical chords in the key of G where you're nice and compact. They're not in like your typical chords in the key of D where they're nice and compact, right? You've got a lot of movement up here. Now that being said, these are really fun, beautiful sounding chords. So they're really nice chords. I would definitely encourage you to learn them. Um, maybe play around with them if you're just kind of you know, doing some worship or you're just, you know, maybe looking for a different, a little change of pace uh, from these chords in the key of G. Um, yeah. So if we were gonna play this song, if I was gonna play this song in the key of E, using chords in the key of E, Jesus We Love You by Bethel Music, I'll sing through a couple of different parts of this song just so you can see um, how the chords sound. Uh, and, you know, I'll try to get these changes down, you know, easily, but, but there might be a couple of parts, I think, especially in the leading up to the bridge where you got some different chords in here. It might get a little bit clunky. So, um, yeah, so this first verse. And all things have passed away. Your love has stayed the same Your constant grace remains the cornerstone Those are your chords for every single verse. Then we do the pre-chorus. For all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be our anthem song Jesus we so we're going from the B for all that we've done we will see sharp minor this will be a our anthem B E over G we love you so you know definitely some quick changes there getting into the chorus chorus is really the same as the verse Jesus, we love you, A to the E. Jesus, we love you. You are the one our, our hearts adore. So then we get into the second chorus where uh, eventually we're going to slow, slowly get into the bridge. So, Jesus, we love you, oh, how we love you. You are the one of our hearts adore. Our hearts adore. Our hearts adore. Our hearts adore. Our hearts And 
then the bridge, pretty easy the first part. Our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus. Our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus. So here we go, F sharp minor. Our affection, our devotion, to the E over G, poured out on the feet of Jesus, to the A, our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus, we know. And then that goes back into the chorus. So really, really nice, bright, thick sounding chords, but there's a lot of movement. So um, yeah, so hopefully this helps you out, shows you how to play chords in the key of E. Um, there's also some other alternative voicings that you can do, like chord formations and chord, um, chord shapes, which I'll do in another lesson. Um, but yeah, if you have questions on, on any of these chords or, or anything about chords in the key of E, definitely drop a comment. Let me know what your question is, what you're maybe confused about. And yeah, hope this helps you out. Love y'all. See you soon.